Hey guys, Levelcap here, and today in gaming, Epic bought a literal shopping mall, there were some surprise winners of Steam's annual game awards, Xbox is working hard to meet demand, and much more. While most mega companies tend to build their own offices, Epic is taking a slightly different route. They just purchased the Cary Town Center, a defunct mall in North Carolina. It's a 980,000 square foot building complex and cost Epic $95 million. They'll be renovating the mall over the next three years, turning it into their company HQ in 2024. Epic will also be opening up the complex to the local community. They're working with the town to explore how local businesses could utilize the space. Epic announced they were on the hunt for a new HQ last year, but they said they were looking for something about half the size of the Cary Town Center. They currently have over 2,200 employees spread out across 35 worldwide offices. They'll likely be housing up to 2,000 employees in the new complex. While much of the space will be dedicated to offices, some of it will be used for recreational faculties and potentially even living spaces. While Epic's future headquarters sounds impressive, they do pale in comparison to other North American companies. Apple, for example, opened its Apple Park Complex in 2017. It's nearly 3 million square feet and houses more than 12,000 employees. While 80% of that square footage is green space, it's also an absolute monster of a facility. Construction took about four years and cost Apple $5 billion. Cary Town Center has been up for grabs since at least 2018. At the time, IKEA was looking to take over the struggling mall, but they backed out. A handful of stores still operate in the mall, but most of the building is closed to the public. Malls have seen a massive decline over the past few years, thanks to the prevalence of online shopping and the pandemic has been a death sentence for many of the businesses you'd find at a typical mall. Epic buying the Cary Town Center is certainly surprising, but if any company can afford to operate such a massive space, it's a massive video game company. Valve announced the winners of the 2020 Steam Awards. Steam users vote on the awards, so they tend to skew towards games that are the most popular. This year's nominations had some standout titles, and the winners were actually pretty diverse. Red Dead Redemption 2 won Game of the Year, Ori and the Will of the Wisps won for Outstanding Visual Style, beating the likes of Battlefield 5 and Black Mesa. Doom Eternal beat the Halo Master Chief Collection and Need for Speed Heat for Best Soundtrack. The Sims 4 beat Microsoft Flight Sim and Satisfactory for Sit Back and Relax category. Other winners include Death Stranding, Apex Legends, Fall Guys, CSGO, and Half-Life Alex. Red Dead 2 winning game of the year is kind of a head scratcher, considering its middling critical reviews and beleaguered multiplayer. Still, it's consistently been one of the top selling games throughout 2020, so it makes sense. In other Valve related news, Valve issued a permaban for the Chinese esports org Newbie. The org has been banned due to match fixing and five of its players have been banned from official tournaments. Newbie won the Dota 2 International in 2014, so they're not a no-name team. The allegations of match fixing surfaced in February of last year following a Dota 2 Star Ladder event. The org denied wrongdoing at the time, but was suspended from competition as Valve conducted their investigation. Xbox head Phil Spencer reaffirmed that Microsoft is doing everything they can to catch up with the demand for the Xbox Series consoles. He went so far as to clarify that he called AMD CEO Lisa Su directly to discuss how they could get more supply. AMD's Ryzen-based APUs are the core for both Xbox and Sony's cutting-edge consoles, which means they have been keeping pace with supplying two of the biggest hardware names on the planet. Xbox expects to start meeting demand in the spring. Of course, much of the supply shortages stem from the factories being shut down or at a limited capacity for months thanks to the pandemic. Sony and Microsoft aren't the only ones facing extreme supply shortages either. Nvidia has been unable to keep its products in stock for more than a few minutes at a time for nearly four months. The only company that doesn't seem to be suffering severe supply issues is Intel. Their latest gen CPUs are readily available from most retailers. If 2020 was the year of the scalper, 2021 is looking to be the year of which company can meet demand first. And while it might be tempting to turn to eBay scalpers to get the hardware you need, the best thing you can do is to be patient. Buying from scalpers encourages that behavior and makes the situation worse for everyone. Classic MMO RuneScape just turned 20 years old. RuneScape was the precursor to games like Neverwinter Nights and World of Warcraft. It launched in 2001. Since then, over 300 million players have created accounts. Despite its age, the game saw a spike of 1.2 million new players last year. 
That surge in new players was likely caused by the game finally launching on Steam last October. Overall, it's pretty crazy to think that a game like RuneScape is still more popular and successful today than most other MMOs. Since its launch, countless other MMOs have come and gone, but RuneScape remains. Cyberpunk's 2077 first-person perspective has left many players frustrated that they can't see their character in action. With the game's heavy emphasis on character customization and clothing, it's a bit odd that the only time you can appreciate how you look is in mirrors or while driving motorcycles or when using the game's photo mode. Thankfully, for those who want a better look at your V, a new mod enables a third-person camera. While the mod works great for just walking around in combat, things go a bit sideways. CD Projekt Red built Cyberpunk from the ground up as an FPS game, so many third-person animations are either broken or don't exist for your character. And of course, this is pretty typical for most FPS games, as the developers would rather put their time and resources into what the player is intended to see. That generally means the animations and interactions for your character are built specifically for the first-person view, and they look like nightmare fuel when viewed from the third person. A modder working on Zelda Breath of the Wild has discovered that the game's NPCs run on an advanced version of Nintendo's Mii system. This is the avatar creation engine players used on Wii, Wii U, 3DS, and Switch to create their online persona. The modder has figured out how to translate Mii files into Yumi format that Breath of the Wild uses for its NPCs. While the formats aren't identical and the process to import them into Breath of the Wild isn't straightforward, it's opened up a whole new realm of modding for the game. Eventually, we might see things like Mii translation programs that let you create a Mii and automatically import them into the game. Before we get into the final story of the day, I just wanted to give you guys a quick heads up. We'll be releasing YouTube shorts that are today's gaming news condensed into a quick 60 second format. So if you see us uploading multiple videos, it's just our way of giving you more options to get the day's news. For mobile users, you can find our shorts on the YouTube's app Home tab. For everyone else, they should appear as a regular upload on the subscription page. In our final story today, a modder has discovered the final secret in Nier Automata. The game is riddled with cheat codes, hidden endings, alternate title screens, character designs, and more. While virtually all of those secrets have been discovered since the game came out nearly four years ago, one final secret remained. A modder looking through the game's engine code discovered a hidden secret and executed it in-game. Upon doing so, the game skipped directly to the ending and unlocked debug mode and other hidden options. The developer has officially confirmed the secret as legit, and while it's unclear how players were intended to discover the secret without digging into the game's code, it's still cool that somebody finally figured it out. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Levelcap, signing off.